what's up noobs so today i'm gonna go over why the gauntlet is easier than you think i know that there's been a lot of doom and gloom at least from when i stream about like what build to exactly do in gauntlet and the gauntlet is actually easier than you might wait it's actually harder than you think right so i was just kidding but the gauntlet's probably gonna be a nightmare i'm gonna go over exactly why it's so bad and it's why it's not just double damage taken and how you can pretty much apply this concept to if you play like trade league or something and if you really wanted to make an immortal character i do know a lot of this was inspired by i think i saw rude doing it when he started using the dawnbreaker shield and it all revolves around fizz taking us ellie so we're going to go over why the gauntlet is harder than you think and why it'll probably result in some very frustrated players but also, the ways you can mitigate it if you want to completely no life it and farm for days upon days upon days upon days to get the gear. So, back in 3.16, players were complaining a lot about the defensive changes, and GGG did this whole defensive overhaul and they actually buffed armor, right? So, what they did was they improved the armor formula so that armor is more powerful, providing better mitigation across the board and increases the strength of modifiers on items that add base local armor. So what this is pretty much saying is that they're adding more armor on items. You can get more armor easily. But they're also changing the equation fundamentally for how it's calculated. Now, for a lot of people who don't know, the physical damage reduction you see in your tooltip is not real. So 20,000 armor, you are not actually getting 88% physical damage reduction or 85 for everything. This is just a portion of how much physical damage reduction you might get. And this how much physical damage reduction you get depends on how much damage you take, right? So this is the formula. The A is the armor value. See, this is like a weird math lesson, honestly. So say you have like 100,000 armor. So this is divided by 100,000 plus five times the damage you take, right? So you can clearly see from this formula that for small hits, you're pretty much going to be having near 90% physical damage reduction. But if you have a huge hit and this value gets higher, say you take like 100,000 hit, right? So it'll be 100,000 divided by 600,000. Your armor is not going to do diddly squat, right? So that's what they did. Before, the formula used to be plus 10 times, right? But they changed it to 5 times. So pretty easy to understand if you actually see the mathematical formula, if you're into math and sort of like that. So basically... If you have what, 10,000 armor, you block a hit that dealt 2,000, you reduce that hit by 33, now you can reduce it by 50%. So the rule of thumb that they want you to know is that if you want to get 50% mitigation against a big fist hit, you need to have around 5 times the damage as armor, where previously it required 10 times the damage, right? So if you want a 5,000 hit, down to 2,500, you need 50,000 armor, and now you only need 25,000, so you just multiply it by 5, and that's how much armor you'll have to reduce it by 50%, roughly. Now, why does this matter? Gauntlet Mods has this one line that I circle kind of badly, because I couldn't make this oval actually wider. I don't really know why, but there's two mods that are really bad. 40% monster attack cast speed and move speed, and 100% monster damage, right? So 100% monster damage in all situations is pretty much just double damage. Because you're not going to be running any maps with extra monster damage generally. So it's pretty much just double damage. I think on Uber Aziri, maybe it's less than that. I'm not too sure because doesn't Uber Aziri have some base monster damage value? But anyhow, why is this so bad? 100% monster damage will be way more than double damage for physical hits because of armor formula. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's just double damage, right? My character will easily survive this. Well, the fact of the matter is this is just not true. Average armor for a lot of characters, if you, especially if you're playing like DD or traps, you're probably going to be around 30k, maybe 40k armor. And that's pretty much because there's not much percent armor on the tree. I guess for DD, you can go down to the Marauder region if you're Chieftain or something like that. But most of them go up to the top right so that you can pretty much get Leaky Shade to reduce your dot damage, right? So your armor value is not going to be very high already. So max roll on Shaper Slam is 26k damage now compared to 13k. So you can pretty much do it like this. This is the Shaper thing. So it does 4,000 damage, let's say, or 4,459. So it deals 200% more damage. So you multiply that by 3, and then you multiply it by 2 because it does 100% increased damage. So you have a hit of around 26,000 
compared to 13,000, right? So you might be wondering, what happens if I take the best of the best character, right? So this is pretty much like a best case scenario character, I think, for the Gauntlet. This is a very tanky Lightning Strike character, like you can see. So let's see what happens, right? So look at the max hit right now, 218,000. And the best way to look at it is physical damage reduction. And I even cheated on this thing. I gave him endurance charges. And we'll go over why endurance charges are so important later on. But basically, this is how you actually adjust the pop to see how much damage you're actually going to be taking. So you can type in the anim enemy's physical damage, right? So we've taken 13,000 hit from Shaper. Not too big, right? We still have 70% physical damage reduction, right? So that's why we multiply 13,000 times 0.3. And that's how much damage you'll end up taking after the physical damage reduction. Now, these are very rough numbers. I don't really know if this is exactly how you do it. But this is just going to give you the general gist of what's happening, right? So if you take 26,000 damage, right, from the physical hit, look at that. 53% physical damage reduction. And this is with a character with 90,000 armor, right? So what does this mean? You times it by 0.47. That's how much damage you'll end up taking. And this is 12,220 and 3,900 original damage, right? So you're roughly taking three times damage on a min-max lightning strike character. So what this means is that, sadly, you're not going to be taking any shaper slams with this character. And it's just not really going to be feasible. You can see you can still take it with Molten Shell because Molten Shell is broken. But if you take it off Molten Shell, you can see that the max fizz hit is just not enough. This is the max fizz hit it can take before the character will perish, right? And the character does 26,000. The Shaper Slam does 26,000. So without Molten Shell, you actually cannot tank the Shaper Slam even on this giga tank of a character, right? So very, very sad. Very, very bad for a lot of people. So fizz hits with big values are going to be a nightmare. In the gauntlet and gonna get a lot of people killed so it's not just double damage like you might think you might be wondering is this all just doom and gloom is no one gonna be able to clear anything and the answer is someone will probably clear it right because there is a way to actually fix this and this is the way that most people should be doing it and this is actually an incredibly efficient way to mitigate huge fizz hits and it's something that's been super popular since the dawn of time honestly there was an item back in the day called Lightning Coil, right? Number one item used in hardcore. Now you might think that, I don't even know what, like back in the day, Lightning Coil was the cream of the crop in terms of items, right? It was unparalleled, no one could touch it. And the reason being is that it has 40% fizz taken as Lightning. And nowadays I think it actually got nerfed down to 30%. So what Fizz taken as Lightning does, or Fizz taken as Ellie does, is it converts your damage over to an elemental damage. And since an elemental damage does not have any weird formula, right, that makes it less effective, depending on how much elemental damage you take, that means that if you convert 50% of your Fizz taken as elemental, you will roughly have the same time in Gauntlet for like just double damage right so you'll actually just be taking double damage and a little bit more depending on how much resist you have so the goal is to convert more of your fizz to ellie and it will make you feel a lot lot safer and this is why dawnbreaker lightning strike berserker with the chieftain forbidden jewels work and that's actually how you just get so much uh what's it called fizz as ellie right so this is a character that you can get a bunch of your fizz converted to fire and then you have the Watcher's side that you can convert even more. So we're going to take a look at one of these characters that has that much stuff. So the easiest way is to go on POA Ninja, go look at Dawnbreaker. And there's not that many of these builds on Softcore actually because you never really need that much damage, right? So let's go look at this guy, right? So what this guy has is he has a helmet. He has Fizz taken as lightning damage on the Implicit. And then he has the Fracture 10% Fizz taken as lightning damage. And then he has a Dawnbreaker of 20% Fizz taken as Fire. And then it also has 7% Fizz taken as Lightning. So this is pretty much an unobtainable item in the Gauntlet. You can also get Taste of Hate for 11% or 15%. But that's not really reliable, right? Watch his eye. You could actually get... He got 19% taken, right? This is probably not an obtainable item either in the Gauntlet. You might actually get lucky. 
And then he has a Forbidden Flame and Flesh Jewel for Tassalio's sign. And this does give you 20% Fizz as Lightning or as Fire. I think it's this note over here. But those are not really obtainable things in the Gauntlet either unless you're just the luckiest person ever, right? So you really can't fix it to like a 100% degree, but you can definitely fix it to around a 50% degree. So you can take Fizz as Ellie on Essence of Horror on Chest. And the reason you can do this is pretty much because you can rely on using Eldritch Implicits and Eldritch Currency to craft the chest to get like suppression or something with the Essence of Horror. So it's doable, but it's a very tedious affair, especially having to get the Essence of Horrors. And then you have the Fizz taken as Elyon Helmet Craft and the Helm Eldritch Implicit, and you could theoretically farm a Dawnbreaker if you just are farming Omniscience anyhow, right? So you will get around... 15% on the chest, like 16% on the helm, so that's 31%, 20% on the Dawnbreak for 51%. So you can also get around like 50% Fizz taken as Elemental, which does make it nearly the same as just double damage instead of having like triple damage in some cases. But another thing that you can also do is focus on Endurance Charges, and this is why a lot of people like Chieftain, right? Because Chieftain has this one no plus one maximum Endurance Charge, and you gain one endurance charge if every second you use a war cry recently. So it's pretty good in general. Now, the nice part about this is that endurance charges do not get affected by what's it called? By your what's it, by the fizz hit, right? So you will see that every single time you take an endurance charge, it will always be 4% more physical damage reduction, regardless of how big the hit is. So let's just say we have a hundred thousand fizz hit, right? So we have 27%. One Endurance Charge will always give you 4% physical damage reduction right here, no matter what happens, right? So if you get a lot of Endurance Charges, like say you get this thing too, it will be really strong. So that's why like Juggernaut builds are so tanky, right? Juggernaut gets more Endurance Charges and it also gets physical damage reduction. And physical damage reduction, like flat, is going to be one of the best things you can possibly get, right? So that's why people always make the memes about how good uh, Juggernaut is, but... So like you see this 1% additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge. This is actually going to be just straight up physical damage reduction, right? And it doesn't get mitigated by armor or affected by the armor formula. However, let's be real, no one's actually going to be playing Juggernaut, right? So now we run into the even bigger problem. So you might be wondering, why can't we just dodge everything? We're not going to get hit by the slams. Well, 40% haste changes everything on boss fights and messes up timing. And I do think that this is the first time people will actually do Uber Aziri and Uber Elder with 40% haste. You can't really roll the invitations and stuff like that. So it'll be an interesting fight, right? No one's done Maven with 40% haste either. So all of this stuff really eliminates a lot of the practice and reps that people have. Like a lot of people learn the fights because they do the fights like what, like three, four, five times on the practice league. A lot of people even have full sets going going into the event and then they do a practice run on the practice league before doing the actual boss fight in the gauntlet and this should make for a great viewing experience you'll see a lot more people struggling on the fight rather than just executing it perfectly because of reps and this should be a great viewing experience right it's not so fun for the player because players really like practice now, even though like having practice is bad it does make for like I don't know, it lets you optimize your route, it lets you optimize everything you know stuff a lot better, and it makes for like a more competitive event, I think. Although, I guess adaptation on the fly probably matters a lot too, right? So maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. I don't really have a huge preference on practice in ideal scenarios, but I actually probably do like what they're doing with it, which allows people to practice to a certain extent, but it still allows a bit of newness to happen during the actual event and people will get completely bamboozled by the 40% haste and I think 40% haste is just as bad as the 100% monster damage so basically if you're playing this gauntlet you'll probably die I think act 9 is a really bad part like if you've ever done act 9 before in the gauntlet you know it's pretty rippy and just imagine doing all of those bosses and just be automatically dead if you're below 50% life so it's not going to be great, right? You probably expect to farm a lot of gear. You want to out-level a lot of the content. And you want to be super wary of big fist hits as you're taking way more than 2x damage. So if you're ever considering, oh, should I take the slam from the bear or the harvest bear or something like that? 
or should I take a slam from the Cursed Crypt boss? The answer is probably don't do it because you're going to die. This is going to be the viewers paying their respects to my corpse as I die in the gauntlet over and over again. This is my tombstone. And overall, you want to get Fizz's Ellie even in Trade League. It's just absurdly strong if you care about making your character immortal. And the Dawnbreaker character, Lightning Strike, is pretty much immortal, right? Especially with 90% Fizz, take it. 90% resist, you'll have 90% actual physical damage reduction. And yeah, if you could ever reach that state in the gauntlet, you'll probably be able to full clear it easily. But yeah, Fizz taking as Ellie might save everything. Who knows? Maybe people will even use the Lightning Coil. But hopefully this has helped educate people a little bit about the armor formula. I know a lot of people really get confused about why their in-game thing is 85% and they're still getting destroyed on some physical hits. But that's pretty much why, right? But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you die less than I do in the gauntlet. And see you next time. Bye. Stay